The man who lives here was with the CIA for 15 years before leaving to try to reform it. He felt the CIA was misusing its power and going too far in manipulating the affairs of other countries. He tried through Congress and the Senate to bring about change and then wrote a book which the CIA tried to stop. Victor Marchetti was the special assistant to the director of the CIA and was one of the men behind the Pine Gap Agreement. We, we had already developed uh, electronic satellites for picking up all kinds of radio signals and uh, other emissions. It was just to put a stationary satellite up there, that, one that orbits with the Earth, you know, some 20-some thousand miles above the Earth, and uh, make it like a vacuum cleaner. Just suck up every, every conceivable thing that you, uh, from microwave, uh, or anything that, uh, on any frequency that may be uh, of value, just suck it up and uh, then send it down with a pencil beam to a down station, such as the place at Pine Gap, and uh, then process it and see what you, what you can learn. So uh, Australia just happened to be there. Australia is a secure environment because we're, we're allies with the Australians and very close uh, on military and uh, um, intelligence matters of mutual uh, concern. So that would be a good down station. And of course, the satellite, which is, was actually over Barneo, uh, the original one, <coughs> would be um, uh, that would be well in range of uh, of eastern Siberia and northern China. From the very beginning, once they get the. He was a close friend and CIA colleague of Marchetti's who entered Australia in 1966 to clear the way for the establishment of Pine Gap. This, yeah, this looks good, and there's a place there, uh, up there at Alice Springs. That would be a good location. The operative's papers there. did not reveal he was from the CIA. Does he make sense? <clears throat> Our contractor, who's going to make the the, uh, the satellite for us, and that uh, everything fits with him, and that. Uh, well, now it's about time we start talking to the Aussies. So it would start at the intelligence working level. The people working on this would begin to... To, uh, to discuss it with their opposite number in Australia. Did the Aussies, as you call them, know what was going on at that time? Oh, sure. Of course, I told you. I explained to you, as, as the project would begin to develop, the Australians would be brought into it. The were they told people, exactly what Yeah, they'd be, was told, they'd be told what we're going to do and uh, why it would be of interest to them and, and of value to them. Now, nobody tells anybody everything. I mean, it's the nature of the business is that uh, you never completely trust anyone and they never completely trust you. I mean, that's just the nature of the business. And there are cases where uh, there will be um, mutual operations going on and uh, not only will the CIA be withholding information from their allies, they'll be trying to recruit some of the people in their, uh, among their allies to work for them. What was the aim of Pine Gap? The primary aim was to collect <coughs> electronic information on, uh, on Soviet uh, missile activities in eastern Siberia and Chinese uh, missile activities, everything from, uh, from testing to uh, operational systems, and on the Chinese in northern China, and any other uh, related military inform any other military information that could be picked up or any other general intelligence information you know since uh, one of the capabilities was to intercept microwave transmissions um so there were there were a lot of things that, that could be acquired uh that were would fit into various intelligence requirements uh, that uh, were established for the cia see i was told that it was a space research facility, joint facilities. Well, that was the cover. That's what all Australians were told. Yeah, well, that was the cover for it at the time. At the time, it was considered a very sensitive operation. Um, the, uh, not so much uh, to keep the uh, Soviets or the Chinese from knowing what we were doing, because I, obviously the Soviets are, are, are very good at this. They can see that thing up there. They know what it, what it is. And uh, uh, so they, 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 they 
can put two and two together and say, well, the Americans have figured out a new way of, uh, of spying on us. And we've got to, uh, if we don't already have it, we better get one too so we can use it on them. And uh, uh, so the Soviets know what's going on. They don't say anything. I mean, that's the way the game is. Uh, the main reason for the secrecy was to keep the uh, Australian and the American public ignorant, particularly the Australian public. Because Australia, uh, Australians uh, are perceived by the Americans to be a little odd about some of these things. They don't sometimes don't appreciate the great threat that the Soviet Union and China and communism pose to the United States and the rest of the free world, including Australia. So we have to, like a big brother to a little brother, we have to protect them from themselves. What the Australian public doesn't know won't hurt them. I mean, there are very few things that are really so sensitive that that you have to keep them secret from your own your own people. Uh, so, by nobody knowing what's going on in Australia, and of course we're not going to say anything. So it was a conspiracy to allow unhindered the gathering of intelligence and military secrets on Australian soil. So they just put up a cover story and say it's a it's a uh, it's a space uh, project of some sort. Everybody knows that uh, Australia was involved in our uh, manned. Uh, um, orbiting of the earth and the moon launches and all that and all the whole nasa thing it's, you know it's a good uh, has a very good position mm -hmm. geographically speaking for this you were telling a lie well yes that's what cover is